Right, so with the Tour de France 2021 route getting announced this evening, I thought, you know, let's actually make a video this week. So uh, this is the website of the Tour de France. Unfortunately, it's a little bit useless, but there are some great stages, more TT kilometers. I think it's going to be a really good race. I'll get into the details. We'll just have a little quick look at the summary here. Um, so they're going to Andorra, which is always good. Eight flat stages, five hilly, six mountain tops. Mountain stages with three finishes at altitude, teen. Saint-Laurie, Soulon, Col de Portet, and Luz Ardiden, which is good. Um, two rest days, two individual TTs, and there's a 250k uh, uh, stage, which is always nice. Um, 58 kilometers of TT, which is good, um, and then all the rest of it. So we'll, we'll get into the stages pretty early on. Um, Cycling Weekly actually has some good summaries here. Um, so number one, they're going up Mont Ventoux twice, which is really good. But what's really not good is they don't finish at the top of Vontu. I really like Vontu as a mountaintop finish. The Mont Vontu Denny Bele challenge is something I really rate. Um, it was really good this year with Vlasov winning and last year with Harada winning. And I think because it's such a long climb, it's very steep as well. 8, 10% for most of it. I think it averages 8%, but there's a long part where it's 10%. It goes up to altitude as well. And it's a really iconic climb. It's a real shame that it's not going to be a summit finish. But doing it twice um, means it's definitely hard, but I just can't see huge GC gaps. Um, they're also going up to 2,400 meters, which is always good. I like altitude again because, you know, if the guy's on the limit, the teammates don't help as much at altitude, which is always good. As we saw in the Giro, altitude causes chaos. The Col de Portet is always good as well. Um, and the Col de Parasud is like a classic. You know, none of these are too crazy. Um, but we'll scroll down to some of the early stages. So the early stages, there's... um. On stage one, there's this climb up the Côte de la Fosse au Loup, um, which looks pretty tasty, to be fair. It's 14%. Um, so that will be, you know, maybe a Sagan, maybe an Alaphilippe day. Someone, you know, punchy. So someone different to wear the yellow jersey. It's not a sprinter. It's not a TT guy, which is always um, going to be interesting. And then they go the Mur de Bretagne. That's also where La Course is. Uh, they're doing five laps. I think La Course is 130k long. Um, but Mur de Bretagne is always good. Dan Martin won the last time they went up there and Tom Dumoulin was 20 seconds motor, motor pacing and all the rest of it. It was um, a pretty good stage, to be honest, and quite enjoyable. Then we've got a 27 kilometer individual TT. So not the longest TT. There were rumors it was going to be like 50K, which would have been great because then you would have seen some real time losses. And people might say, well, why do you want to see time losses? But that means people have to attack. And it also means that you can't just be a climber. I think recently, you know, the Grand Tours, okay, especially the Tour, have actually not been won by climbers. But it's bad precedent to have that a climber could, like, this year, like, the TT was just useless. Like, you know, if you had Prime Quintana, you would have won that easy because there was just no TT kilometers, but that doesn't make you well-rounded. Like, a climbers aren't GC, like, contenders normally. It's only quite modern, like, in recent times where they had less team time trials and less individual time trials, which means climbers could win. They still haven't, but I think it's good that you get more TTs because you need to be, like, a well-rounded person to win a Grand Tour, in my opinion. Stage seven looks quite good, actually. Uh, a little, you know, sharp finish here. Uh, it's like, you know, only 5k long, but the last two kilometers are at 9% and 13% are the Signal du Champ. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting. I always like these sort of rogue finishes where they're not mountain top finishes. They always seem to have a bit more GC gaps. First mountain top, uh, mountain stage, that's one for the break. I literally don't know why they put these in. They're mind-numbingly boring to watch because you just know that that's the... Um, Yumbo Visma, Ineos, or one of those teams that's strong will just set a tempo on the front and the break will contest that day. So fair enough. Then we've got Teen, which obviously was supposed to be in last year's Tour de France, but was cancelled because of mudslides. Um, and Col de Pré, 12.6k at 8% is decent. Uh, Corne de Rosselon is 6k at like 6.5%, so nothing crazy. And the last climb goes up to 2,100 metres and it's 21k at 6%. I don't think Teen is a super hard climb. But because it goes up to altitude, it could, you know, have a couple, you know, difficulties. But I can't imagine it being that decisive, to be honest, um, you know, unless there's some real start, sharp pinches. But I just don't think they are because it's a ski resort climb. So we all know what ski resort climbs are like, you know, just easy 6K, 6, 7%, nothing too steep at all. Um, then we've got some days to the sprinters. I'm not really going to go through the stages to the sprinters because, to be honest, like, you know, they're either pretty obvious going to be sprinter days or there could be a bit of crosswind action but you can't really analyze it much and it hopefully for gc there could be some crosswinds but again you can't predict the wind this far out stage 11 is looking pretty exciting but again it's annoying they're not finishing 
at the top of Mumble on two, but Mumble on two twice is very, very impressive. Probably one for the break, but could be some GC GC action potentially. Um, but we'll see. Apparently, it's absolutely crazy descents down there. Um, stage 12 is going to be Neem, which is again a sprint stage. And then we've got this stage here, which is like a medium mountain stage. I don't know why this is on it. It's again one for the break, but decently exciting. And then this is the stage where I think it could be super, super exciting. You've got like a peak burnout, someone who's really, really good at altitude. Um, you know, going up to 2,400 meters is pretty exciting. They go up to 2,100 meters, uh, sorry, up to 2,400 meters with quite a long way to go and back up to 1,800 meters. Obviously, it's a descent finish, but, you know, people can crack when you ride properly high. Um, so if, you know, it's a strong train and really could launch it at 2,400 meters, that could definitely sort of cause some chaos. Um, this is stage 17. Apparently, stage 16, you know, is another like medium mountain stage. And stage 17 is a properly hilly day again. Col de Paris Sud, 13k at 7%. Um, we saw that this year's Tour de France. And then Col de Valeron, which is 7k at 8%. And then the last one is the Col de Portet, which is 16k at 9%. So that's good. It goes up decently high, 2,200 meters. So that should have some GC impact. I mean, obviously, these days it seems like GC impact is, you know, only the last two kilometers. As we saw in the Angler today, nothing really happened. Uh, and then. There's going to be a finish up the loser at Den, which they haven't published the stage profile for, which is stage, and then stage 19 is going to be a sprinter's day. And stage 20, as it seems now is tradition, really, it's happened for the last, the last couple, really. Um, obviously, 2019, it didn't, but 2018, it was also finished by a TT. Um, there should be a 31 kilometer time trial. So if we think overall who it's going to suit, so Puncture is going to win the yellow jersey on the first day, maybe with Alaphilippe, maybe uh wow van art someone like that then obviously overall it sort of suits a gc person but not a pure tt man because it's not that many kilometers but it's a decent enough amount so you really think again like roglic is probably going to be the favorite but then the issue is his team is just a massive bottle job so probably unlikely um i'm not going to sell my predictions now because i like to get them correct and generally i do all right on them uh, but I think at this moment, it's quite hard to predict who's going well, who wouldn't be going well at that time. But it definitely suits someone like, you know, Gary Thomas would obviously be one of the favourites here. Fourth or fifth, a fourth, I think it was in the uh, World's TT this year, was looking pretty pimped in time training uh, up some of the climbs in Torino. And then I think the Giro, he probably would have won as well. So I think he'll definitely be a favourite. Tal Gagan Hart, maybe as well. He's pretty good, pretty good on the TT. Um, I think it's, you know, it's one of those blokes, De Moulin, if he's in top condition, again, could just ruin people on the TT and survive on the mountains. There's not as too many ridiculously hard mountain stages with summit finishes. Like, the, obviously, there's a couple, like the Blonde Blonde 2 stage, etc, etc. But there's none that you'd say are absolutely off the chart, which would be really tough. Um, the, obviously, Andorra stage does go up to 2,400 metres, but I think De Moulin's not too bad at altitude. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. It looks like a fair few stages, maybe for the breakaway as well which is always good i like quite like the breakaway stages so yeah overall i think it's a decent tour i think it's probably hopefully going to be better than last year i thought last year was again one of the most boring tours ever so maybe that was maybe the way it was written obviously people are going to say what about the last day ATT? but if you ignored that the mountains weren't very hard they weren't very interesting but hopefully this year a bit more altitude early on like this stage here you think like over 2400 meters if it's written aggressively you could really have the leaders only on this last bit and it could be a really exciting rush down to andorra so I think ultimately it should be a good tour, but it is the tour is the tour. People want to control it. People don't want to take risks. You know, it's more important to get fourth on the tour than it is to win it for most people. While in the Giro, no one cares about fourth. Everyone wants to win it. And I think that's the biggest change. And it doesn't matter what you do um, in regards to like any the route. It just is what it is with the tour. Um, but I think it's going to be super exciting um, as always to see who you, who everyone brings the form everyone's got. Hopefully the season will be more normal. Obviously with Rona hitting these days, you don't really know. Um, but yeah, I'd say one last thing. It's a shame there's no team time trial. Okay, I know Enric Mass will lose 10 million minutes. I know Bardi will, well, actually he's at Sunweb, so maybe he wouldn't. But I know the French boys would lose a lot of time. But I think team time trial is one of the most aesthetically pleasing disciplines. It's so nice to watch. A short 10K prologue like the Welter normally do. I think is perfect because it gives you enough that like, you know, you're not going to lose a minute on a, if you've got a terrible team time trial, but it also allows you to watch the beautiful discipline of team time trial. And also it's, it's just really nice 
discipline in, all together. And also I quite like Alex Dowsett and the more team time trials are, the higher chance he is of getting a contract, same with Campanaz. So it's a shame there's no team time trial. But hopefully the Giro could have like a 30k team time trial and that'd be unreal. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. And obviously the last day is the sprint stage into the Champs-Élysées. Uh, so yeah, it should be pretty exciting. Um, in terms of mountain, to uh, mountain bonuses, uh, they've got bonuses on the last couple of climbs again. Um, which I think is decent again. So I think it's eight seconds on each of the final mountain top finishes. Um, so yeah, the ease of the mountain top finishes, eight, five, and two, and obviously 10, six, and four at the finish. So pretty exciting. And I think hopefully that should have maybe m make the GC bunch bring back the break earlier if they want to gain time, especially for Bogaccia, for instance, because he's very punchy and seems to win quite a lot of those. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Cheers for watching. Let me know obviously yours below. Smash the subscribe and like button, all the rest of it. Um, I'll see you in the next one.